This is Twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, and it's time to talk space with our very own rocket man. Rod Pyle is here. He is, of course, uh, fully qualified to speak about space matters, seeing as how he used to work at JPL and is now editor-in-chief of Ad Astra, the the magazine of the official magazine, the National Space Society at space.nss.org, and has written umpteen books about space. Look for Rod Pyle at Amazon, P-Y-L-E. Hello, Rod. Hello, Tex. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see my hat and my so, uh, Kentucky string tie, I see. I was going to say the hat's cool, but but figuring out how to do the tie would be what would undo me. Because it's probably bow. hard to make it look just like that. Just right? a bow. So... Yeah. It's all because of Yosemite, which is my favorite TV show with uh, Kevin. I'm sorry, Yellowstone. Wrong park. <laughs> Ye Yosemite's about a bear and his uh, sidekick, and they love picnic baskets. No, Yellowstone yeah. uh, with Kevin Costner. Thank you, Lady Laura, for correcting me. Uh, she's going, what are you talking about? Uh, I love that show, even if I can't remember the name. And they wear those nice cowboy hats, and I just said, I have to get, I have to get one. But anyway, that's no, not what you're here to talk yeah. about. You're here to talk no, about rocket talk ships, about. the future, and the past. And Elon Musk again. Oh, this video. I'm so this, jealous. Uh, yeah. From what is, is It's the Everyday Astronaut uh, channel on YouTube. Three million yeah, views. Tim Dodd. Tim Dodd is Three and a half million it? views. Yeah. Three and a half million. And, and because he got a multi-hour interview... With Elon Musk, not just with Elon Musk, but on the grounds of SpaceX, looking at the rockets. So it's it's not that uncommon to get inside of the Hawthorne plant. You don't have to be that special. I've done it. But to get inside of this plant, which is down in Boca Chica, Texas, is pretty much impossible. So what happens down there, it's, you know, it's a fenced off reserve, as you'd expect. So there's dozens of people in the trade, in the journalism trade, that are either camped out They're or permanently standing at the fence. Now. They stand they at the stand fence. by the fence. And they fly <laughs> drones and all that. If they and had SpaceX. my outfit on, they might get in in Boca Chica. <laughs> right. I'm just so saying. It's really irritating to the SpaceX guys, but the, you know, they it, it it's free PR. I mean, they don't have to do any promotion, right? Yeah. But Tim somehow gets this special access, so he spends about two and a half hours with Musk walking around the facility. Now, this is the space age done different. You know, these they basically decide, okay, what's the process to build this rocket? We'll figure that out, and then we'll put a, put a big tent over it. There are very few concrete buildings there. They're all Tyvek tents, which, you know, it's again, it's just enough to do the job right. It's very Russian in a, in a certain aspect, except he's doing the job. It's really more Silicon Valley, are. isn't it? It's uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's let's just let's just get it done. But the thing that was so amazing about this multi-part interview is, you know, Tim's asking questions with this wandering kind of steady cam thing on his phone, I think. Musk, we, we see him a lot on stage. We see him doing Joe Rogan and that kind of stuff. This is really him. I mean, you get a sense of his personality. He's a little distracted. He's, he kind of fades in and out. He's kind of the absent-minded professor, isn't he? That's always been his way. Yeah, I think. well, yeah. And, and on his Saturday Night Live thing, he said, look, I've got Asperger's. Yeah, you know? So yeah. expect I don't know if that's expect. true, but uh, yeah, he's I, definitely, you know, he's different. He's Yeah, he is, but I have to say, so he's, he's walking along. Now, he did write later, look, <laughs> I had had hardly no sleep the night before, <laughs> and I just my, had a back surgery. My so defenses were down. I don't know who this guy is, but I yeah. let him in, and we talked. This is cool. Well, you, so you're recommending you people watch this because it's there's this yeah. is part one and it's two hours. Really there's going to be a part two, I suspect. And I'd rather they they you know download what you and I do, but yeah, they should. Watch no, this. I'm just jealous and, of these guys. Uh, Tim is obviously well, doing very well, and this is the this is the future of media. I have to say, uh, yeah. everybody, you every company now knows you want attention. You go to YouTube. That's where that's where the young people are. Hey, I want to ask you, yes, sir, about poor old Boeing. Because it's just now. Remember, you were out there uh, hoping to yeah. see the Starliner test launch a couple of weeks ago, and that was scrubbed, and then it was scrubbed again. And now they've hauled the Starliner back to the hangar. Yes. So, yes, I, I actually waited for three separate launch attempts and saw none. So uh, nobody could see one now. They're, they're they're delaying this indefinitely. Yeah. So this is the 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 monopropellant system. This this is a maneuvering thruster system. 
that had to uh, engage before they could launch because it's also the abort system for this thing. Uh -huh. And uh, of the 24 valves that are required to do that, 13 of them didn't open. So they checked and checked and you know thought, oh, maybe it's a software fault, fingers crossed. Well, it turns out it's not. So they dragged it back inside the building. And it looks as if um, some moisture got in there and corroded the valve right at the point that it opens. Now, that's understandable. But at the same time, you, you want to say, Boeing, you guys have been doing this for a really long time. You built a lot of rockets. You know, you worked on the Saturn V. You've worked on other things. What part of this is that challenging? But that's too simplistic and unfair. So so NASA's hanging in there with them. But, you know, in the time it takes them to get their first launch ready, again, is the comparison we've made on the show before, you see Musk doing multiple launches of his Starship and walking around during this tour just to hop to, back to that for a second. One thing he keeps saying, with all due conviction, is, look... I can answer questions about what you're looking at here because there's rows of rockets and nose cones and engines. And again, it's this General Motors type thing. But he says it's 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 kind of disingenuous because this will probably change next week. And even as he's standing there giving the interview, he'll chew his lip for a second and say, you know, you just made a good point. That's a good idea. I'm going to change this. That's and Elon. The guy behind him scribbles down notes. Yeah. And they just do it That's fast Elon. and furious. Yeah. But he did also mention, by the way, that... Designing and building the rocket really hasn't been that hard. The hard part is doing it in such a way that it's like a Model T, so it'll work on the assembly line. Because yeah. his whole point is yeah. to build hundreds and hundreds of these things. Uh, this is, I think, an important thing, and I, I, I think it it doesn't do a, it does a disservice to Boeing to say, "Oh, look, they can't get it right." Now they're going back to the drawing board. I think we sometimes don't see how hard this is. All of this stuff. And when you get somebody yeah. who's a super genius like Elon and has an amazing workflow like uh, SpaceX, it, it hides the difficulty. But there, it is still there. It does a little bit. And 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 we want to make it safe. We want we want to make it work. And I think it's completely appropriate. In fact, I I commend Boeing for saying, no, you know what? We're taking it back to the drawing board. We're not going to rush it. Let's get this right. And I think yeah, NASA is famous for taking a very long time to do things. Right. Yes, they are. And, and and Boeing is to be commended for their maturity and saying, you know, we're under a lot of public relations pressure here. But like you say, we're going to take it back and do it right. And there's another good reason for that. This is on their own dime. Since that first fail test failure, everything's been on their own money. NASA is not giving them the money for the reflight. So this is getting very expensive on them. I think I want it to give them some slack. And surprising. I want to cut them some but, slack. Now, one other quick yeah, story. We also, only got a minute left. I just want to bring this up. Oh, sure. The Russians say the Americans <laughs> drilled a hole <laughs> yes. in one of the modules, the Russian module on the space station, causing it to, to fail. And it's all the Americans' fault. Doggone it. They're making that up, Americans aren't they? There's there's video. There's no there's no video. There is no evidence of them being anywhere near the the right leak. So this is 2018. The leak was detected on the space station. They traced it down to a hole, not punctured, but drilled in the size of the Soyuz. And it really model. looked like the one of the Russian engineers made a mistake, filled it up with glue, and let it fly. Yeah. Tried to cover it, right, and then the cover popped off, and boom, we had a leak. <laughs> so part of what hasn't been clear is, was the attempted fix from the inside of the outside? If it's from the outside, it most certainly was not an American astronaut. Yeah. But in any case, you know, this desperate claim that some oh, crazed man. American drilled a hole so they get home. And mind you, this is, you know, a week or two weeks after their new module up at the space station failed, started sending Spinning. a <laughs> propellant, spun it one and a half times. That's a big structure with a lot of weak little parts hanging this, off. The, but the moral of this whole time. story, all this whole thing is, <laughs> space is hard. Take care. Let's do it right. Rod Pyle, Spaceman, Leo Laporte, the tech guy.